I'm Sky Kubaku, the owner and creator of Rebirth Garments, a clothing line for people on the full spectrum of gender, size, and ability. And today we're going to work on making found objects into embellishments. This video is part of the Radical Fit program series, which I am helping to create with Chicago Public Library. It is an eight month long fashion program that embraces craft, DIY, making, uh, while all while providing a safe space for teens to discuss gender equity, being non-binary, being queer, being trans, and to dream and create through personal expression of style. When I was 13 in seventh grade, my mom and I worked on embellishing this thrift store skirt with pop tops. And I wanted it so that they could kind of move around and make noises on, on my legs and then the ones at the bottom, I wanted to be a little more still. I loved blazers a lot. So I always was decorating them with the chain mail that I made and then just sewing that on and little scraps of fabric that I had. But I loved putting toys onto all of my clothing. I thought that it was gonna be very like difficult, like there had to be some sort of secret to how to sew uh, anything. Um, I, I didn't know how simple it could be. Uh, and I ended up doing some more complicated things like sewing some of my chain mail onto shoes. But today we're going to work on a jacket that I actually got in eighth grade and I get lots of compliments on it all the time. Uh, it's a wool jacket that's black um, and I am known for having lots of army men on it uh, and I used to have dinosaurs chasing the army men so we're going to do that today um, and then just like refresh some things. As you can tell this has been repaired many times, it's well loved, but it was actually in the website The Sartorialist. Gather up the found objects that you want to sew onto your clothing. I have this wooden cabinet with lots of little drawers that uh, is where I store all of the things that I want to sew onto my clothing generally. So yeah, I think I might take an airplane. Here's some, some aliens, maybe I'll take one of those. These are all actually from Uncle Fun's, which is an awesome shop that I grew up uh, getting all of my art supplies from. It's just a shop full of knickknacks and, and stuff. It, it was like definitely an amazing part of Chicago, but it's closed now. But if you go to Baltimore, there's the uh, American Visionary Museum and they have um, a version of Uncle Fun's there by the same guy, Uncle Fun. Besides sewing on small plastic toys to my garments, I also liked to collect different kinds of metal bits. So here I have washers that I collected from under the L tracks. And even though this is a piece where everything was just wired together, you can also sew them onto your clothing. Although I would not recommend sewing it onto light colored clothing because the rest might dye your clothing. Anything that is small and very easy to collect is really fun to decorate clothing with. So a favorite of many is pop tops. We have some found objects like pop tops. I have some washers and I have dinosaurs. So yeah, we'll definitely be working on the dinosaurs, but you can also, um, well, you need to wear a ventilator if you do this, but I was really into melting plastic army men to look like they were kissing each other. For this project, you're going to need your found objects. You're going to need an embroidery needle. It's my favorite ones are the gold needles from Joann's that are a little bit more dull um, because I like to do wild things and I don't like to stab my fingers. You'll need some embroidery floss, but it can be any color. It can either blend in or stand out. You're gonna start off by threading your needle and cutting out a piece of this embroidery floss. Take a little bit less than two arm lengths of embroidery floss and cut it. I would highly recommend watching the Mending with Embroidery video with Michelle Brooks that was 
uh, out earlier in this series. And uh, embroidery needles are nice because they have a really big eye. Um, I'm just going to use all six of the embroidery floss threads because we are going to be sewing to my outerwear coat, so it needs to be very sturdy. And you can double the thread by pulling it all the way to meet each of the ends. And then you are going to double knot this. So this is much thicker than I would probably do on uh, for other things, but if you're going to be sewing some pretty big found objects onto uh, some sturdy clothing, especially winter wear, then you want it to be thick. In order to split the embroidery floss, you can always pull it apart. There's six threads. You can take two, you can take three. Um, I think I'm going to split it in half and you just pull it and it will unravel it. Uh, and there's a fun secret trick that works where you could just pull the one half and then this half is getting scrunched up, but it's all, all not scrunchy anymore. I am going to put the airplane first here. So what you do, you always start from the back so that the, the knot is not seen and you just pull through and then you want to find places that you can capture the the toy or the found object so that it won't slip out. So this is a good point because it's like very thin and then it flares out with the, the tail and so that'll be really strong. I am going to do a little crisscross here in the center to make it very strong and not come off. So you can see how it looks in the back and I'm going to go from the back and finish. Now that I have my airplane secured with this crisscross, I'm gonna turn it to the back and we're gonna tie a knot. And instead of trying to tie a knot here and then trying to get it close to the edge um, or close to the back, it's much easier to just capture one of the threads and you're then going to go through it and so now you have it twisted around that. And that's not a knot currently, so you need to go through it again. And then go through and make that into a knot. And I would double knot it or triple knot it. So go through again and then go th through the hole to make a knot. And now you can just cut it off and we have a cute airplane on the lapel. Again, we're going to start from behind and I just hold onto my little dinosaur kind of in place and feel around in the back. And I'm gonna go first attaching his neck. So I just poke it through. And then I'm going to capture this little dinosaur's neck. I am also going to catch the dinosaur around its arm because I remember from experience that the arms like to um, kind of get caught on things. And I tend to like to have each one sewn separately so that they, because if you sew the next, go on and sew the next one, there'll be this longer string and sometimes it can get pulled and then it gets weird. So I'll sew on some other dinosaurs and show you all when it's done. So now it's done. I want to give this pocket a little bit of armor because it has had lots of holes on it and I think if I put some washers on it, then it'll be a little bit more protected. So this is a little bit more tricky because we're going to have to be doing this inside the pocket, but you just do it kind of similarly like the dinosaur. You hold the washer where you want it to end up being and you go inside the pocket 
and you're just gonna poke up through. Since I just put the needle through right there, I'm not gonna poke it out through here or, or here or somewhere really far away. I'm going to poke it up through somewhere pretty close by so that the back doesn't look so wild. If you wanted to have like a super contrasting color and you could even do some like knotting or like weaving and then when you want to knot it so I just really force it so that I can see the back. Here's how my project turned out. I have my dinosaur chasing army men over here. I have my plane on my lapel and I have my armored washer pocket. Books that I was looking at when I was really getting into found object embellishment were the fruits and fresh fruits books. They weren't necessarily showing me a lot of found object embellishment, but I did really like all of the colors and textures and uh, layering that the people in this uh, were wearing. And this is all Japanese street fashion. If you do make a project that's from the Radical Fit series, then you should share it on your social media and tag hashtag CPL Radical Fit. You should also follow me on Instagram and TikTok and Twitter at Rebirth Garments. And you can also follow U Media Chicago on Instagram, YouTube, and they also have Facebook and Twitter.